Did you ever notice how in the Bible, whenever God needed to punish someone or make an example, or whenever God needed a killing, he sent an angel? Did you ever wonder what a creature like that must be like? A whole existence spent praising your God, but always with one wing dipped in blood. Did you ever really want to see an angel? Some people lose their faith because heaven shows them too little, but how many people lose their faith because heaven showed them too much? Greetings, sleepers. Before we begin our descent, please remember that due to adult language and the violent nature of this tale, as well as the very adult themes of Cult Divinity Lost, this story is rated hard M, and we strongly encourage listener discretion. We make full use of consented gaming and safety tools on this show and hope you do the same. And now, journey with us beyond the city's neon glow, snaking through faded alleys and darkened corridors. Descend past echoing subway platforms and choking steam tunnels. Follow the trails of blood raining down from the streets and apartments above, crimson rivers perpetually fed by atrocity and sin. Explore the city's darkest labyrinths and ritual chambers, where cold concrete meets warm flesh, where shadows dwell and insanity reigns. Gaze shamelessly into this abyssal realm, Freely share your forbidden secrets with strangers, open your tortured heart, and let your sorrows and passions bleed out. Allow them to reshape your mind and body into new exquisite horrors. Sink into sublime depravity and soothing pain where dread citadels and forgotten worlds wait beyond a tenuous threshold of darkness and madness. Welcome, Seekers. I will be your narrator, guiding you through the atrocities that lie just beyond the veil. With me are the victims of Metropolis in the Inferno, here to burn in ecstasy, fall in madness, and be dragged screaming into the labyrinth. Our menagerie of lost and broken players. Introduce yourselves to the audience and give us a glimpse of what, who and where and what you'll be playing. Uh, hello, I am Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Tonight, I will be recreating... Um, my uh, previous Cult Divinity Lost character, Garnet, um, who is a descendant and also um, is currently um, reborn for the second time because uh, she's been through some shit. Uh, hello, I am Aaron. Um... I use any pronouns with he, him being the lowest priority and they, them being top at the moment. Uh, you can find me everywhere as Great Cthulhu. Um, tonight I will be playing Annalise Rivers, uh, who will be a broken. Good evening. I'm Salubri, and you may find me on Twitter and Twitch and anywhere else you please as Salubri underscore NA. Tonight, I will be playing Marjorie Eyre, a careerist, here to provide you with the best medical care for whatever you require. Is that me? Yes, it's you. Hi, I'm uh, Keldon Khalil. You can call me Moon. Uh, I'll be playing Ample and New, a doll. I am Zachary Naldrick, he, him. I can be found on the Bird app and other places on the interwebs at Zach Rules. Um, and the places you can't find me there, I'm at Zach Rules Dice. I am playing criminal. I, I do not have a name for it and him yet. And I am going to make the possibly unwise decision and let Big Dad Industries name me. <laughs> brave, and, brave man. Ah. Uh, Critical K will also be joining us next week when their internet is cooperating with them. <clears throat> now, we have no recap because we haven't played yet. However, when we do recap, does anyone wish to take notes? If not, I will write the recaps for this tale. But if one of you would like to, feel free to volunteer. Not me. <laughs> I did my best last time, and I ruined it for Savannah. <laughs> I will handle someone it. Who's, someone who knows what's going on should, should do the recap, which eliminates me. Uh, <laughs> I will handle it for this one, and we will decide how to do readers. Perhaps we'll take turns. We'll see. That'd be cute. I can, I can read. Uh, are, are you sure? Can you? Are we, are we sure? <laughs> it, I mean, there, there's going to be some words I might pronounce wrong and get put in the wrong order, but I can do it. <laughs> I never said I could do it well. He'll have the spirit, and that's all we really need. 
So, I know some of you have played this before, and some of you have not. I'm going to approach character creation as if none of you had. So, are we ready to jump in? We live in a world where the sun has set, where our divinity is lost, and where death is the only beginning. The world of cult divinity lost is vast. The story begins with a being of immense power, the Demiurge, who, is snared, who has ensnared you and the rest of humanity, forcing you into submission. <clears throat> it has used principles with which the, it has used the principles of society and the shackles of modern civilization to bind humanity and diminish our divinity into absolute nothingness. But things have begun to fall apart. And the power of this demiurge is weakened as we begin to question the structures of faith and politics that keep us in slavery. The divine order has been thrown into revolt and the worldviews that have held humanity captive for thousands of years have begun to fall apart. Now the boundaries of our illusion are weakened. And you, one of the rare few, have begun to peer through the lies and see through the tears and cracks of the illusion, have revealed to yourself a world much darker than the one you thought existed. It's a world of grim buildings, dirty stone facades, and darkened doorways that may lead to terrible places. Border worlds, where pale beings in perpetual shadow dwell, where demons and other tormentors spiritually torture the mentally ill, and cults worship strange gods, committing murderous sacrifice. Terrors dwell within and without, and as the illusion weakens, your nightmares take shape, your dark secrets haunt you, and the perverse appetite of mankind shows itself to you, bringing about unspeakable creatures of flesh and fear. You will seek to discover your origins, find the pathway that reveals the magic of the illusion, and journey towards that dim light of your true divinity. As a character in Cult Divinity Lost, you will become involved in events that are tied to your past. Perhaps your sins have caught up to you. Childhood fears may resurface in nightmarish form in the things that you deal with in your daily life. <clears throat> Perhaps you'd be tormented by things so common, they're almost forgotten by society at large. Anger, desire, pain, mental illness, they may all manifest in new and haunting ways. In this game, you journey into those dark places. <clears throat> Cult Divinity Lost uses a modified Powered by the Apocalypse game system, whereas most Powered by the Apocalypse games use two six-sided dice, or 2d6. Cult Divinity Lost uses two ten-sided dice. Rolls of... Uh, 15 or higher are considered a complete success. Rolls of 10 to 14. Oh, what you got, Zach? I saw your hand. Oh, you're just holding up dice. Okay. <laughs> Rolls of 10 to 14 are considered a success with complications. You will typically still be able to choose your outcome in a limited form, but I will gain moves to use against you immediately or perhaps in the future. Rolling a 9 or lower is considered a failure, and I will gain a variety of moves to use against you. When building a character, you will choose an archetype, and then adjust your character's attributes. All PCs have a list of standard moves based on these attributes that you use, as well as your advantages, disadvantages, and dark secrets based on your archetype. These also help establish your story, both past and future. You are all awakened to your captivity, and despite everything you thought you knew, you realize your whole life has been a lie. None of you will be sleepers, because with sleepers, it should be all or nothing. Sleepers are vastly underpowered compared to awakened characters. Uh, one of you is coming in from previous campaigns in our cult world, and is actually enlightened, but is a unique case where their enlightenment is not vastly overpowering yours. Sometimes you die and crawl back out of uh, the inferno with a new body. And that new body doesn't have all its powers yet. <coughs> As your reality slowly falls apart, you'll experience the darkness waiting for you in the shadows. You'll, you'll confront unthinkable horrors, and if you survive, you will be changed. You will have to make pacts with terrible entities and elude dark and sinister forces. You must try to find the truth that has wrecked your existence and the horrors that come with it. Fallen angels, twisted demons, and lost gods walk in our midst. So do too do your eternal jailers, pitiless beings beyond time itself, who only exist to keep you in prison. In Cult Divinity Lost, GMs do not roll. I present you with scenarios that you then react to with your moves. I then gain moves that I can use against you as a result of the moves you make. Only you roll dice. Attribute scores act as modifiers to your roll and are added or subtracted accordingly. For example, if you're rolling to endure injury, which by the way is the most complicated roll in Cult Divinity Lost, 
you would roll 2d10, take the total and add or subtract your fortitude, and then subtract the harm level of the weapon, and then if you had armor, add it, and you would tell me your total, looking for a 15 or higher, or worst case scenario, a 10 or higher. There are 10 moves available to players, and each are linked to your attributes. Uh, if you'd like a cheat sheet, Cult Divinity Lost website at Helmgast has those freely available for all of you and anyone watching to download and use. I can also hand them out later, if you have a hard time finding them. <coughs> uh, of those uh, ten attributes, three are passive, and all of the rest are active. Passive are defensive, active are things you use to interact with the world. You probably recognize some of the terms as being very D&D-like. They are essentially the same thing as they would be in, say, a Pathfinder game. <coughs> uh, when you roll a 15 or higher, you accomplish your goal without complications. When you roll a 10 to 14, your success is accompanied by complications. Sometimes, as I mentioned a second ago, I will get moved. Sometimes I will have you choose a condition to take on. That condition will affect your role-playing and future things that happen to you. Like being afraid, or being paralyzed in the moment, or whatever else we can come up with. The book has some examples, but it can be anything cool we can come up with that drives your story forward in a negative way. Nine or lower, I pick the condition and I get moves. <laughs> uh, if you go to cultdivinitylost.com slash resources, you'll find a player move reference sheet. Question so far from anyone who's not played this before. Okay. There's also an 11th move that is not directly tied to any single attribute, which is helping or hindering. This is you use on each other. In a help or hinder scenario, you will roll the same thing the person you're trying to help or hinder is rolling. A complete success gives them a plus 2 to their roll for helping, or a minus 2 for hindering. A partial success gives them a plus one or minus one, and a failure gives you and them complications. So it's very simple how to aid each other in this game. You could all theoretically aid each other to massively stack for something very hard like a magic ritual. Or cause all kinds of horrible complications. <coughs> So, archetypes. Your past shapes who you are. The trauma, the secrets, and the encounters with the unexplainable you've had will define how your character begins. Uh, you have begun your awakening, but still have not fully glimpsed the truth of the world. So you will have a handful of advantages and disadvantages, one or more dark secrets. And as we advance, you will get more and more and more of them until it topples you into madness. Or maybe you reclaim your divinity, we'll see. Uh, archetypes will help set up what those specifically are, those dark secrets, those advantages, and those disadvantages, which are also 2d10 rolls. Some should be rolled at the beginning of every session, and you'll DM me the results. Some are interactive. But no matter what, if it's an advantage or a disadvantage and we bring it into play, you will roll 2d10 to see how well it helps or hinders you. <coughs> okay. Uh, let's start with Moon, because he's done this before. Which archetype did you choose? I chose the doll. And tell us a little bit about why you like this archetype. Uh, well, um, just like in Monster Hearts, I like the archetypes which are, um, I really enjoy archetypes which are, you know, seemingly weak, uh, and, uh, kind of uh, put people in positions where they have to help me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really like the mortal archetype in Monster Hearts and the doll really has that kind of energy. Um, so yeah, so I enjoy that archetype where uh, I really have to depend on other people to get me what I want with, and, and they want to help me. Okay. I'm going to ask a small series of questions and attracted by some cool pictures <laughs> and uh i will be asking each of you these questions so you can listen and then maybe have answers prepared we'll start with this one moon now these are your character obviously not you why are you here in this game at this time in this place without knowing the story oh um 
Well, I've had a very, you know, like difficult put upon life. Uh, so, but this character has come to uh, believe that, you know, it's all for a reason that he's had such, you know, all these traumatic experiences and that people have like kind of used and abused him his whole life. Uh, and so there's some greater purpose out there uh, waiting for him. And he just has to find where he needs to be to make that happen. Okay. What story do you want to tell for this character? Um, hmm, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what story. It's a mystery. I'm, I'm curious what story will happen from this character. I don't really have anything in mind. Okay. So, uh, I guess plunging into the void is the story I, I hope for this character. Okay. What part of your past and present do you think will help you unlock that future? Key events, maybe. Specific things about yourself that you can use to tear apart the lie. Um, well, my character, um, I guess, uh, discovered very early that others see him as like an object, uh, someone to be, you know, used for their own purposes. Um, like other people seem to, to want him for things. Uh, and so that he plans to use that to get to where he needs to be and find the people who can get him there. Okay. <clears throat> um, is there anything specific in the depths of yourself that you want to explore in the story for your character? Um, something in the depths of the character? Um, hmm. Well, um... This character has a lot, has a, you know, like very serious compulsive behaviors. Um, so just as uh, he's always been kind of uh, an object to other people, he has a hard time saying no to people and not being that object, which is probably why, you know, one of, is a learned behavior, but also a defense mechanism. And, and that's something that, you know, this, that, that I would probably explore with this character yet. Okay. I like it. Um, are there any specific secrets you're dying for your character to expose? Like, this one's kind of more for you because you know more about the setting. The underworld, the labyrinth, the inferno, angels, metropolis. Any specific thing you're looking for, for that could be interesting to you? Um, yeah, I guess I'm, you know, curious to expose, uh, you know, uh, like, I guess the, you know, the monstrous entities behind it all. I'm, I'm curious to, to meet and interact with them. Okay. <clears throat> and, uh. Having said all those things, what did you pick for your dark secrets for this character from the ones available in your archetype? I took Chosen One. Tell us what that is. Uh, basically, um, I, um, through experience, I have come to realize that, uh, there's some supernatural entities that have like chosen me for some kind of fate that I don't know what it is. They have some use for me. Um, and so, uh, you know, they've chosen me for some reason. I'm marked by fate. Uh, and I'm not, I don't know what that is, whether I'm, you know, chosen to be something great or a sacrifice or who knows what, uh, but I know that I'm chosen. Okay. And uh, what about advantages and disadvantages? Uh, what are my advantages and disadvantages? Yes. Yeah. Um, my advantages are uh, perpetual victim, uh, divine, and magnetic attraction. Okay. Tell us a little bit about those. 
Uh, perpetual victim means that I'm constantly getting into trouble and uh, I need a lot of help. Okay. <laughs> Uh, divine means that there's something about um, my true self, my true non-lie self that still shines through. And so when I meet or encounter supernatural entities, uh, sometimes they see that and listen to me. Uh, and then lastly, magnetic attraction. Uh, I guess... Um, People have a hard time ignoring me um, and often, you know, listen to what I have to say when I get their attention. Okay. For my uh, disadvantages, I have uh, object of desire, which all dolls have to have, uh, and sexual neurosis. Perfect. I'm just taking notes, don't mind me. The use against you later. Mm. I mean, for you, yes. Um, next, let's move on to Aaron, and then we'll circle back to other things. Same question's coming for you, Aaron. All right, let's here? go. Why are you here? Uh, it told me to be here. I'll message you later about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And uh, what story do you want to tell with this character? Um, uh, not necessarily a redemption arc, but at least reclaiming some semblance of normalcy. Okay. Uh, what part of your past and present will help you achieve this goal and tear down the lie? Uh, I think coming in contact with it. <laughs> okay. Uh. What secrets do you want to expose from this character of this mythology of the world of cult? Inferno. That was quick. <laughs> I had time to think about it. <laughs> what depths do you want to explore of your own character? Um, uh, The struggles of mental illness. Okay. And uh, I also didn't ask Moon this one, but I'll circle back to Moon in a second. Who do you want to be at the end if you don't die? If you become enlightened? I don't know. Okay. Uh, I will also mention, before I have Moon answer, that I have really cool uh, community homebrew content for other enlightened templates. So we have the prophet slash priest. We have the monster. That's not what it's called. You know the one I'm talking about. Aberration, I think. Uh, we have the mystic, the death mage, but I also have passion mage, space mage, and madness available. Oh boy, madness sounds real tasty, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> <clears throat> Moon, any idea where you would want to go should you survive and become enlightened? Cannot hear you. Sorry. I there we go. Computer. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I, I don't know where I'd want to end up. I, I figure I'm. Uh, this is definitely a um, fate take me there character. Okay. I'm gonna go to Sarah next. Have you played Cult before? I have not. Okay. I'm very excited. It will be easier on these questions with you then. You oh, but I already had all the answers! Oh, well, then I'll ask them all. Okay. Why is she here? Um, product advertisement. Okay. She is I, the, I she, didn't do it. She's the CEO of some big pharma company, uh, and Maybe they are looking to uh, buy a manufacturing or distributing plant in the area because people are sick people are in a lot of pain and they need what i have i wasn't going to claim any responsibility for your character and then you spat out this and i'm just like ah damn it would be garnet's fault <laughs> uh what story do you want to tell with this lady 
Marjorie's story is uh, a story of revenge, not necessarily for her, but maybe for the people that she's harmed to get where she is. Maybe revenge for the people that she's helped. Maybe okay. she'll get her comeuppance. So revenge against you as well as by you. Okay. Uh, what part of your past and present will help Marjorie discover her future? That one's a little hard, actually. But I think it'll have a lot to do with her uh, cutthroat nature. All the sacrifices that she's had to make for herself and make other people sacrifice uh, will help get her through this. Okay. And what depths of the character do you want to explore? That's actually another good question. Um, I don't know, maybe all of the actions and all maybe all of the atrocities that she's had to commit will um, be mirrored back at her and she'll finally realize just what a terrible person she is. Or maybe they'll just, you know, everything that's thrown at her will reveal that she's been on the right track this whole time. Okay. And what secrets of this mythology are you interested in if you have read ahead any? I haven't read any. Okay. Um, I'm I'm very excited uh, to fuck around and find out. <laughs> and then the who do you want to be? You, obviously, you probably wouldn't know that yet either. Um, I no, but she'll either be a martyr or a cautionary tale. Okay. Okay. Zach! Why is your guy here? Uh, he, he, uh, found out something that he shouldn't have found out. He doesn't quite know what it is yet. He, he didn't find out that much about it. He found out just enough for it to be a problem. Okay. And he's taking it up on himself to, uh, now nah, he's still out for himself at this point. Okay. Um, what story do you want to tell with your character? Uh, so I'm thinking that while he may start off uh, just being out for himself and protecting his own ass, he is going to come to the realization that maybe things are bigger than there's more shit going on uh, than just him. And then maybe he learns to, to do the right thing for the right reasons instead of just to cover himself okay uh what part of your past or present will help you tear through the lie complete and utter lack of morals uh, okay. He will do whatever he needs to in order to get to what he's looking for. Okay. What depths of the character do you want to explore? This question is weirded cult is worded cult style, but it really means what do you want to explore as your character growth arc? Uh kind of that redemption arc um, he may not have the skills to do good things for good uh, for good reasons but he'll have the he'll come to the point where he has no problem doing bad things but doing it for good reasons okay and uh, did you read up on the mythology at all 
No. Okay. And uh, any idea where you would want your level 20 to be? Uh, you said something about, like, monster was one of the possibilities. Is that, did I hear that right? You did, yes. Uh, Something in kind of that yeah. vein, but in a um, if a good monster is an option. So there is the when it it's it means literally physically monstrous, not necessarily mentally. So okay, yes, you could be. It's yeah. called the abomination, and if you have the core book, it's on page three fifty two. 352. Uh, PDFs. <laughs> yeah, might be a page or two off. For anyone else, that's where it starts for Enlightened. The only ones you won't see are the ones I have homebrewed, which are basically all the other kinds of mages you can be. Cult's mythology breaks down magic into death, passion, time and space, madness. What page did you say? 352. I, I see. I, I, 350, 356 I, in the PDF. Oh, yeah. I, I unknowingly picked a Marauder, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that's already taken is Death Mage. Speaking of which, let's move on to our Death Mage, whose approach is a little different. Most of these questions have been already answered, and that journey has begun. Hi. Uh, you want to do your version of a quick summary of what happened to Garnet? Whatever you do or don't want them to know? I mean, if they wanted to be really nosy, they could uh, go and watch uh, Phasmagoria on YouTube uh, and see all of her dirty little secrets. Um, but the TLDR is um, Garnet is not actually Garnet. Her actual name is Adeline Faust. And she is part of the Faust family who are billionaires? Trillionaires? Trillionaires, yes. Old family money who have multiple businesses across the world. And they have done some horrible shit. Um, she experienced some not so nice things uh, being in that world, um, including something that happened very personal to her, uh, which made her leave home. Uh, she left home, stripped all of her status from herself, and she went to India, where she started a cult. <laughs> um, People will do anything but go to therapy. Yeah, I will do anything but go to therapy. She started a cult, um, and started her process to become awakened. Um, while she was in India, uh, she did a ritual that uh, herself, um, and she regrew her body to um, gain power. And then she was called back home to a house that had a Nephilim in it, locked underneath it. Correct. Uh, she found out she was connected uh, through her family, through some dealings that they made to gain their power, um, and money and wealth, um, and positions. Uh, so she set it free and made a deal with it to destroy her family. Um, that didn't really work out how she wanted it <laughs> to, because, you know, when you kind of come upon that thing, you don't really think out your requests. Um, so she lost a whole bunch of time with that happening. Woke up in an asylum with another mutual friend of hers. Went back to the house, which actually wasn't the house. And she kind of found out that she was in purgatory. Um, but not really. And her body was actually being used as a power source to. How do you explain that part? 
discovered that inside of this house was a machine invented by someone who knew too much about Metropolis, brought back some technology from there, and created a device called STEM that you could hook someone into and force them into purgatory and pull their experiences out and use it as a power source. Garnet was the source of power for the machine itself because her soul was immortal because of the dark pact she had made with death. So, um, in breaking down the machine, um, Garnet also destroyed her body for the second time. Um, so this is the second regrowth of her body, um, that she has gone through, um, and her striving for power. Um, because not that this is a thing, um, but she wants to be all powerful. She essentially wants to be the Supreme and she's not going to let anybody get in her way. So, what do you have written down as a dark secret currently? Chosen one, heir, and bound to the house. So bound to the house is replaced with packed with dark powers. Okay. And uh, chosen one is replaced with forbidden knowledge. Okay. What do you have for disadvantages? A lot. (laughs) We only need two since you're basically reset. Um, Well, so my disadvantages are Cursed, Repressed Memories, and Involuntary Portal. Uh, Keep Cursed. Repressed Memories aren't repressed anymore. Yeah, so take that off, and you're not a portal anymore, so take that off. Okay. Uh, You can take your choice of Marked or Nemesis, with no further context. Uh, Nemesis. Okay. Uh, abilities are diff- are what replace advantages for you. Uh, you have initiate. Oh, okay, hold on. So instead of advantages, I would have these things. Yes. Okay, so clear out advantages completely. All of them. Yes. Okay. I'm ready. Uh, initiate. Talisman, okay. because you're wearing it. <laughs> And uh, a second chance, which these are all in the book. I'll give you page numbers later. Okay. And then you do have a limitation because at your archetype level, you get limitations to offset the fact that you get three advantages. It's called field of expertise. And you do get an 11th move. So 12th, if you count, eight and other. (laughs) Perform a ritual. Oh. This is not like D&D, though, where you can... This is for everyone else. You already know this, but where you can cast Fireball and suddenly her character has a massive advantage over everyone else. And cult rituals are long, hard, and messy, and the requirements are intense. So they do give you edges, but they're not fast and they're not immediate. Okay. Stock numbers. Uh, attributes. We'll start with passive. Passive attributes give you the following. One of them is a plus two. One of them is a plus one. One of them is a plus zero. You don't have to mess with your numbers, Garnet. You're fine. Okay. The rest of you can decide which one are you best at, which one are you good at, and which one are you average. Passives, nobody has to be poor. Do we have uh, sheets on roll 20? Yes. Uh, yes, should be assigned to you. Let me make sure. Yeah, I don't think I... Uh... It says it is. Let's make sure I actually gave it to you and not some... Yep. But you can't control it. There you go. Now you can see it. Wait. Uh, 
Uh, once you've chosen those numbers, you can move on to your actives. Your actives have the following spread. I'll go slow so you can write it down if you need to. Uh, plus three. Plus two. Plus one. Plus one. Zero. Minus one. Minus two. Now... For those of you who have not played before, I will go over uh, these moves, or these attributes and the moves associated with them, so you know what's happening. Uh, I'll go back to the passives. We'll start there. Fortitude. When you roll Fortitude, you're rolling to Endure Injury. This means you've been hit, and now we're going to see how badly it hurts you. Cult does not use hit points. It uses injury levels. The farther you go down, the more hindered you are, and the more negatives your rolls get. And if you go down too far, you die. And it's not very far. Four or five injury levels, you did. And you can take that in one hit because, you know, sometimes you get shot in the face. Willpower is rolling keep it together. This means you're trying not to have a breakdown over something. Not to freak out in a certain situation. Not to lose your temper and punch someone when they piss you off. Those are all keep it together. And reflexes are to avoid harm. That's pretty obvious. Uh, passive, or active, I'm sorry, reason is used to roll investigate. This is any kind of learning information that's not related to reading a person. Could be research, could be scanning a room, whatever. Perception is rolled to observe a situation. This is less of a let's dig into the details and more of a what do I see when I look around, where's the exits, who's the threat in this room. Intuition is used to read a person, to do insight, to figure out what someone wants, to manipulate people. Coolness is to act under pressure. This is whenever anything has a high stake and you need to keep calm to make it happen. First aid rolls. Uh, high speed car chase. Uh, jumping from rooftop to rooftop while a winged monster is chasing you. Charisma is rolled to influence other. This is self-explanatory. Violence is engaging in combat in whatever form is necessary. Shooting, punching, stabbing, kicking, drowning, whatever. And soul is to see through the illusion, which is rolled anytime you're interacting with a monster, seeing through magic, helping Garnet cast a spell, whatever. The monsters appear human to most people. Seeing through the illusion is necessary to see their true form. And when you roll 2d10, you will add or subtract the number in these boxes. Thank you. And while you're putting in numbers, I will explain advancement for the audience and anyone who's not played Cult. At the end of every session where we play a full session, we'll go through a list of questions. Uh, some of those questions will be like, have you challenged yourself? Have you discovered anything new about the truth? Have you learned anything new about yourself, your character? Uh, for every question you answer yes, you'll get an XP. Once you get 5 XP, you can choose an advancement available on your character sheet, which is in the core book next to your archetype. This allows you to increase your attribute values or give you additional advantages. When an advancement is chosen, you'll mark it off because you cannot endlessly repeat advantages. Some have lots of repeats, some only have one. Uh... Once you have gained a set level advancements, you can become a new archetype. That's how you get to Enlightened. Once you hit Enlightened, the game doesn't stop. Then you get a whole new set of how you advance. You advance much slower. And your advancements are still new powers and new advantages. And new attributes. But at that point, you get a set of new things to pick from as well as all of the old things. You can also choose advantages with experience outside of your own archetype. You're only limited to your archetype of creation. Anybody still doing numbers? Okay. 
Uh, last but not least, we have connections. Uh, your connections are either to other people in the party or to other people or things in the world. Doesn't matter what you pick, it can't be an object, but it could be a pet. However, be aware, I will use it in the story, it will show up, and it is in danger. <laughs> the second it becomes a connection, it is threatened by everything in this game. Uh, so, if you just say, yeah, I have parents, but your parents are not in your connections, they're mostly safe. If one of your parents is a connection, they're not safe anymore. <laughs> Sounds about right, yeah. This would go under the relations section of our character Correct. sheet. Yep. How many uh, or is... Uh, with relations? Yes. Uh... What do I want to do? Please don't tell me it's connected to your soul number. No. It's a set number for everybody. It's universal. Okay, good. It's really up to the story, so I would like two neutral, one meaningful, and two vital from each of you. A neutral, because relations, like everything in this game, are 2d10 roll. A neutral relation is just a flat roll, plus zero. A meaningful is a plus one, and a vital is plus two. I will explain. These don't have to be positively meaningful and vital. They could be negatively meaningful and vital. They could be your enemies. A neutral applies to most people, acquaintances, friends, co-workers, people you don't have a lot in common with but still want to be in the story. Meaningful are close friends, family members, romantic interests, beloved pets, personal mentors. And vital are passionate lovers, your own children, the only friend you have left, your obsession. I mean, soulmate. Um, if we're taking Nemesis as a disadvantage, does that mean that they should probably be... be a relation as well uh yeah that makes sense and that would probably be vital <laughs> in a negative so, way so just to clarify it was two neutral one important and then two vital correct okay i have my vitals now they can be oh. with each other but you don't have to you don't have to be connected unless you want to they can all be external npcs i leave that up to you to discuss also, oh. just because one of you connects to another one of you doesn't mean that person has to connect back. <laughs> For our I get archetypes, we have the relations section and the archetypes. How do we use those? Uh, for this story, you're not required to do those. You can just do the ones I asked for. Unless you prefer your archetype ones, and then I'm fine with that. Like, if you put a lot of work into those and wrote them down, keep those. No. Nope. nope. If you do not, uh, just that's... ignore that and do the ones I did. Alright, so let's see. Because the archetype ones are good, but sometimes they don't fit the story. Because <laughs> they're very specific. Yeah, mine were going to be problematic, so I'm glad I don't have to. <laughs> not, not, in like a, not in like a problematic way, but just like difficult to like hedge right. into the story. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um... I've, only, I've only got my accountant so far. Okay. Um... Tyler, do you remember Garnet's like high school boy? Do you remember what his name was? Uh, I Did we name him Thomas? Names. I want to say we named him Thomas. It's Thomas, yeah. After my cat. Yes. <laughs> Thomas was the one that uh, came to a bad end. Did he? No, oh, no, that wasn't Thomas. That was the other kid. You're fine. I was just like, oh, I don't remember that. I need another neutral. You could pick Marjorie because naturally I, I, it is very easy to say that Marjorie is here to buy your property. Oh, also I will point out for world building, Faust Capital is the uh, Rothschilds of this reality. Okay. Yeah, the the kind of i the kind of like idea I have for Marjorie is like her like she's very like new money, and she's like one of the last people in the modern era to have kind of like been like a rags to riches story. I 
I like it. Yeah, so, so like, you, can, you know. You could neutral to each other, or just Garnet could neutral to Marjorie and leave it at that. Hey, or it Garnet. could be that it's a higher level for Marjorie because it's more important for Marjorie to land this deal than it is for Garnet. <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah. Hey, gorgeous. How you doing? Hey. <laughs> I sent you my relations in the side chat. I can also say them out loud. No, these you should leave on your sheet or send them to me in a DM and only let me see them. Oh, okay. So okay. you did it right. Yep. These are good. You need more than names or just... Nah. I didn't uh, give well, names yet. I gave who they were. <laughs> yeah, I would prefer the connection to the name, actually. So just like why it matters. Best friend, teacher, lover, whatever. One, two words is enough. I don't think I need to <clears throat> explain mine. Nope. <laughs> I think mine, yeah. I think mine are good. Even the quotation one? If you need more, I can get more. I think no, it, I you know, <clears throat> I'm putting one on my sheet, and the name kind of give it away. Let me check. Maybe. Or at least the meaningful and vital. Uh, I'm still coming up with another neutral. Aaron, yours are good. Perfect. I like the fourth, the second to the last one. <laughs> <laughs> it was too, vi too vital, too neutral, and a meaningful. Uh, right. Yep, you got that correct. Oh, oh it's meaningful. too vital. Yeah. It's two vital, one meaningful, two neutral. And I don't know what the first one is in your list, Zach, but I understand the last two. Okay. If I tell you it's an unloving color reference, will you get it? Yes, we're good now. <laughs> yeah, meaningful is the technical word, but as long as you understand it's a plus one roll, it's fine with me what you call it. Um, I'm sending you mine now, Tyler. Okay. pronounced Amblay for the first name? Ample. Ample. Anyone have any questions while people finish up their connections? You said two vital, right? Um, so to clarify on one of the like neutrals, I took the dark secret, um, I've funded medical experimentation. So one Nothing of, could go wrong here at all. Yeah. So one of the, yeah. So one of the, uh, one of the neutrals is tied to that. way you describe that last one is brilliant. That's cold. Okay, these are good. <laughs> yeah, Mar Marjorie chose violence this morning. <laughs> Damn, I thought I was cold-hearted. Apparently you're going to give me a run for my money. Oh. And I have a lot of it. So does she. 
totally we're just gonna like we're just gonna have one of those like uh we're gonna have like an like an almost like an anime fight where we're just like throwing bills <laughs> at each other to see who runs up first um, put savannah in the side these two characters are either going to be best friends or murder each other there's no in between <laughs> Well, it was also, so the first time I played this character, it was at, like, her mansion house that was her family. And, like, somebody made her mad, and she legit just grabbed a $10,000 bottle of champagne and chucked it at their head. Like, no qualms of just, like, I just wasted X amount of dollars. She's just like, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Well, uh, the last of you finish those up. Let's talk about equipment. Who has a violence higher than zero? It ain't me, Chief. The two of you with your hands raised can start with a weapon of your choice. Butterfly knife, please. Okay, butterfly knife. Uh, gives you the attacks. The two following attacks. You can just declare them as actions. Cut, slice, stab. It adds two to your violence roll in addition to your other modifiers. Do I just get one for being over? Or do I get one for one being over? One per point. One per point. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm going to my balance now. <laughs> we, can, we can deal with the knife first, though. So cut, slice, stab is plus two. Okay. And the other move you get is edge of the throat, which means you control the target until they break free. That's where you, you know, threatening to cut their throat. Same for you. If you want a knife, Zach, all knives give those two moves with those bonuses. Okay. <laughs> uh, so he, he will have a... <laughs> yeah. Knife, gun, and knuckles. Okay. Uh, gun. Handgun or something bigger and more illegal? Handgun. Or also rifle shotgun. Handgun. Uh, regular handgun or are you uh, overcompensator and need a magnum? Um, overcompensating. Because <laughs> it's cult. Everything has a negative connotation. So it's probably uh, something that'll have a decent kick, but mm -hmm. it's not going to be unhideable. Oh, so you want a handgun. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a handgun. Um, uh, all guns? Well, all, okay, all handguns, the kind you're talking about right now, have an ammo of four. You can consider it like bubbles. Check boxes, however you want to do it. Okay. It's not true for all guns. Magnums get less, machine guns get more, etc. Uh, combat shooting gives you plus two to the violence roll, but costs one ammo. Just, uh, what pages are the odds? I'll just go and type, put them in later. Uh, 139. So that's probably 144 in the PDF. 139 was the gun? Yeah. And what page is the knife? 138. I'm going to read them out loud anyway so people can hear them. Okay. Uh, overkill is plus three, uses two ammo. And multiple targets is plus two, is minus three ammo, but you can hit two targets. And then Knuckles. Uh, uh, Knuckles give you a variety of advantages. Punch, kick, and tear for one. Uh, or punch, kick, and tear is two with brass knuckles. And excessive force is three. Everything else is the same as list listed for unarmed combat. Okay. You get a slight what pages, advantage. What pages Knuckles on? Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll go back and fill that in later. I'm catching up on putting it in. Advantages. Aaron, how many dots do you have in violence? Two. What do you want for your second piece of equipment? Uh, does syringe count? <laughs> <laughs> that would fall under stab again. It would be the same. Okay. Uh, I will. I will. Uh. Mm. Ooh, I see chopping weapons are available, like a fire axe that I've stolen from a, you know. A safety box or something that works. Yes. Which gives you hack, slash, and chop for plus two, or momentum for plus one, but hits two targets. Sounds um, good. Uh, day jobs for everyone who is not Sarah or Savannah. What are your day jobs in the game world? 
Uh, I'm a model. Okay. I would hire you for some of my ad campaigns. Not really that kind of model. That's just what it says on my tax form. I'd hire you for my after parties. <laughs> okay. What about the other two? Uh, well, I was going to say escape mental patient as my occupation. So, so I don't are, have it. You do whatever you have to do on the street to survive. Got it. Exactly. Politician. <laughs> Damn. Legally, have my vote. Legally, he doesn't quite have a job. Um, the security guard is what would be okay. put up on his tax return. Huh. Independent contractor. There you go. See if special equipment applies to any of those. Dog, first thing in the list. Uh, hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, 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 he's, he's hired muscle, essentially. Occasionally, he, he will do street fights and things of that nature because he is not disciplined enough to do uh, sanctioned MMA fighting. He's also not trained enough because he just hits people and doesn't do really any grappling. Are you the kind of criminal who does a little B and E on the side? Same question uh, for Annalise or Am uh, uh, Amble. He's not. He doesn't go out to do B and E. Someone goes, "I need another body for a job." Are you in? And he'll go along. Okay. But that's not his. That's not how he uh, generally makes his money uh, for me very yes love them b and e's okay what an amble no no uh what's your character's name zach did you pick one i, I did not i left okay. that up to uh big dad oh, industries right. and big dad industries apparently summoned the elder gods and then ran off and hadn't Left you hanging. Didn't say anything. Yeah. Wow. So, your unnamed character can have a crowbar. This is page 141 of the core book. And Annalise, you can have uh, lockpicks. Same page. Yeah, that would make sense as, as for his, his style would be a crowbar more than a lockpick. Rich ladies. Tasers? Okay. Um, no, I just walk around with my with my big dog privilege. Okay. Marjorie, Taser is on page 141 also. What it does. Okay. It's, it's under stunt gun. Uh, Criminal Man, Silencer, also on that page, is available to you. And uh, none of you would have body armor because you're not in those professions. Well, I mean... Depending on the type of job he was taking, he might have access to it. Now, Amble, you're a special case. I know you don't have points in violence, but you know what you do at night can be dangerous. If you want a knife or some tear or some pepper spray, you can from the equipment section of the book. Um, can I have cocaine instead? Uh, you can. Okay. Why one. say instead when you can say as well? Are you going to use your cocaine like pocket sand? That's a waste I've, of cocaine. I, I yeah. mean, I wouldn't. I mean, I have more effective ways of disarming people than pepper spray. I think. Okay. Anybody have any final questions? Where do I put my equipment on the character sheet? Page two. Page two. Page two. Nope. 
Up at the top, there's page one, page okay. two. There we go. I found it. All right. I, I wasn't going to panic. <laughs> you were panicking. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, when the opening scene begins... You're all at a restaurant. This is a three Michelin star restaurant. In Pick a City. Majority rules. New Jersey. Okay. LA. Okay. City, a city. I mean, oh, um, I'll, I'll second in LA. <laughs> yeah, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, obviously. Carries. Okay. <laughs> the motion carries. You are in a three-star Michelin restaurant in L.A. And no, residents should not throw in your favorites because my L.A. is different. Uh, it has a three-star restaurant, so it is very different. <laughs> Garnet Marjorie, Bunch. you were there because you're having a business dinner with each other and your retinue. It's a big table. Uh, Annalise, you're here. Uh, because your choice, you're casing the joint or a person who frequents the joint regularly. Either way, you've gotten yourself a busboy job. Bus girl job in this case. Or bus Buster. person. Uh, unnamed Zach character. <laughs> uh, you're here because there is a sit down between two local crime syndicates. And they've hired extra muscle to be at the sit down. Uh, you can either be your choice of the dock workers, mob, or the gang, the uh, bikers. In this case, bikers. And Amble, you're here because uh, someone who's hired you as a high class escort for the night and wants to have the illusion of the nice dinner and the date first. Okay. Okay. The scene will open with Garnet and Marjorie. Um, do are I we... have my entourage with me, or is it just me? Yes, there. Are we alone? Do we have like? There are some... eight of you at this table. Each of you has three add-ons. Okay. Um, her add-on is one to her right is um her scary dog privilege. Uh, who is like a six foot like six foot two six foot three um man who just looks like he walked out of a like death metal rock concert um and then the other one is a uh like demure woman um who is about probably the same height as garnet um in but looks very calculating and cold and then Tyler can add in the third because I don't know who else would be in my entourage at the moment. A lawyer. Oh, yeah. One of those. Okay. Um, so on to her to Marjorie's left is her accountant Siegfried. Okay. Uh, Siegfried is a very like kind of like sniveling like he must he must have rented the suit uh for this day doesn't fit him very well um to her right is her lawyer who is this uh maybe about her age uh middle aged on the older side man who's balding um who's actually dressed nice in a suit that fits him um and then on his right uh is i don't know some third person that tyler can make up um what would you like the names to be for your lackey and your lawyer uh my first account is fine for me yeah first names is fine uh so f um so accountant is siegfried okay that's a few dms and then her lawyer is um Black. 
uh, Ace. Okay. Uh, and then Marjorie is obviously like sitting directly across from Garnet, and she is. I have her description here. Um, she's wearing ex- she's wearing an expensive pant suit. She has cold eyes and wrinkly face. She's tall and is withering. Uh, and occasionally she has to excuse herself if you say something funny to um, sip from an inhaler. Uh, hmm. <laughs> My appearance description is so fucking cocky. <laughs> um, Garnet um, is the epitome of a test tube baby because she legitimately was. She has no flaws. Um, she has pure white hair, clear skin, no blemishes. Um, and, um, she dresses much like I am dressed now. She has, like, a black crop top. Um, she has a very ornate headpiece, which you don't know if that's a fashion statement or what's going on with her. Um, I mean, you're rich. You can, it can be whatever you- I can, yeah, I can do and dress however I want. <laughs> and she very much lives that lifestyle to the fullest. Okay. Um, and just to, just as an, uh, added character clarification, am I trying to buy land from you? Uh, do you want it to be the land garnet or do you want it to be the actual facility? Like there is the pharmaceutical manufacturing facility or one that could easily be converted to such? Um, yeah. I mean, she has within the Faust conglomerate, (laughs) essentially, there are pharmaceutical doings um so i could very much see that i have a facility that maybe isn't performing or is just been sitting empty because we like collapsed and then uncollapsed and now there's just like a rebuilding period okay so yeah so there's an actual facility that with land that you could purchase okay all right very good um, what's her last name? You would know that Garnet just goes by Garnet. Okay. She does not like to be referred to as a Faust, even though she runs the company. Okay. Yeah. And um, for uh, it's Miss Air. Miss Air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, just... All right. Well, I'm done playing footsie now, Garnet. If you will take the check that I've written out for you and 10% of the cut, I would be willing to take that plant off your hands. Would you now? Yes. You don't enjoy a little footy? Well, is that what we've not been doing all night? I mean, if you want to continue, I have a limo in the back. Your lawyer... (laughs) I have the paperwork right here. Shoves it forward. Um, Garnet takes it across the table and shoves it to her lawyer. Doesn't even look at it. <laughs> Garnet's lawyer. Are you signing this here or in the limo? Smirk. I have no interest. No offense, Miss Eyre. My I have... lawyer turns bright red. <clears throat> I have my hands quite full looks over simultaneously at both Sid and Sin, who are sitting next to her. Sid pops out a switchblade and starts cleaning his fingernails. Sin pushes the hand under the table and rolls her eyes. Alright, well, if you have your hands so full here, then at least let me pay you for the plant. Garnet eyes her lawyer looking for a sign that the deal is good or not. Marjorie, are you trying to stack the deck in this contract? No. Like in a more than average way, no? Okay. You know, she she wants to pay upright for the land itself. Um, she'll, you know, um, give Garnet, like, 10% of all of the, like, 
uh, of all of like the outgoings from that plant. Uh, all for taking it. Like, uh, as far as this looks like, this looks like, it almost looks, it looks like, uh, just like, she's just, she's just buying, she's just buying it, you know? Like, she isn't, like, she isn't, like, trying to um, undercut or do anything like that. Okay. The lawyer reads through it. Says, I don't see anything suspicious in here, ma'am. On first glance. Garnet slides it over in front of her, and um, I'm going to choose to attempt to see through the illusion to see if there's anything wonky. Okay, roll it. Um, and also, if I can, um, add in Marjorie and her group as well. Interesting. Okay. Hello. Is that 2d10? And then I add, right? Correct. 20. Okay. Seeing through the illusion, uh, it's not a specific question you ask. Okay. Make a perception also. Okay. Perception. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> Observe a situation. Yeah. yeah. 18. So uh, I'm automatically giving you the two questions that apply in this case, which is what's being hidden from you and what seems strange about this. And you're looking at the people on the table, all of them look fairly normal to you. There's something about Marjorie, but you can't quite place it, and it's not threatening. It's the thing that usually makes you go, they should be one of my new cultists. Mm. Uh, they just have that thing that makes them marked. However, your eyes slide past Marjorie deeper into the, uh, into the restaurant. And... And another table, only one of the other, one of the few that's as big as yours. Most people here are small groups, or just two people. Uh, are a bunch of people who obviously <laughs> look like criminals. Like if this was a mobster movie, the cameras would be on that table. However, one of them, who seems to be the guy in charge of the biker gang, uh turns to sling his arm over the side of his chair and laugh too loud at a joke and for a restaurant like this and when his jacket falls open plastic and metal and a twisting gear sliding through the side of his flesh and then it's gone we're gonna have to fill in Savannah's noggin that would be new to Garnet. Garnet has no experience with where this comes from. Oh, okay. Wouldn't surprise Garnet necessarily, because you were stuck in the stem machine, but you never had time to explore that technology before it exploded. This is not necessarily that, but this seems similar. It is okay. machinery woven into flesh that's hidden from normal eyes. You're muted. Oh, I think they just muted each other. Nope. Dean. What's going on? <laughs> okay. Soon. Soon. It's so, it's so, oh my God, he's getting That's... up. Yeah. Oh no. We're in danger. I'm in danger. Haha! <laughs> 
<laughs> can only can only imagine what they're saying to each other right now. What didn't you? Know? Can you hear me now? Yes, I yeah. can hear you now. And the answer is no. I don't want to know. Oh, I want no. Who's that one? Okay. Uh, no. So I was fucking around with roll twenty because I lost my music, um, and then roll twenty decided to steal everything. <laughs> For whatever yeah, there's reason. a setting you can use that turn like turns right. off like if you go to settings and then no yeah I I have it all clicked on none oh, okay um, and it it's like nope I'm gonna I'm gonna deal it anyway Garnet kind of like cocks her head to the side sealing that oh I have music now yay okay um <laughs> I was sad because he messaged me he's like oh it's your song and i'm just like i can't hear it and this is making me mad <laughs> um you know that's kind of new and probably odd and i don't know marjorie seems nice enough um so garnet wants to expedite our exit from this restaurant both hers and marjorie's so that means you'd want to get to the signing, which is not a simple matter of sign and go. But you got to start somewhere, right? It's not. Does Garnet actually have a sunflower pen? <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Amble. Camera pans over to a corner in the uh, table in the corner in a less well lit area, a part of the restaurant. Is your date guy, girl, or other? Uh, well, I mean, you know, they're paying. Okay. Uh, they have been treating you like all of this is brand new to you, and you should be very privileged that you're drinking this expensive wine and eating this nice steak. And they're like, did you know that if you cut it this way, it tastes better? It's been like that the whole evening. How do you feel about that? Um, well, you know, I don't know, I guess, uh, it doesn't really matter. I, I don't really feel any way about it. I don't really feel any way about much, most things. Um, but, you know, I, I do my best to, uh, play along. They're like, oh, okay. I had no idea. Really? For real? Huh. So you, you play deeply into the condescension. Brilliant. Yes, yeah. I'm kind of, uh, lean. my body's like kind of lean and fit. I have innocent eyes and a happy face. How tall are you? Um, like 6'2". So you are tall, okay. You're a tall guy, you're, you're a tall person, but you look harmless. Got it. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely muscular and lean, but I don't have a body that anyone would find intimidating right. on its own i can i can be intimidating but it's not does it you know, have to pay for that too <laughs> is this a first timer or a regular oh uh, the person taking me out yep uh let's say it's the first time okay what'd you order classy place use your imagination that includes the drink um well, you know, obviously, from what you've told me about this person, I didn't order anything. I let them order for me. <laughs> what did they order for you? Oh, Jesus. They probably ordered me, like, a lobster and some, like, terrible, like, super sweet wine. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. The French label on I mean, it doesn't really matter. You know, I, I, I like, I drink several glasses of it to keep pace with them, but obviously it doesn't really matter too much because of the cocaine. Okay. Uh, they are, in fact, five or six glasses in by this point. You've been through two bottles of this really expensive wine. And uh, they have been drilling you for your deep, impressive thoughts on Moon Knight. Because that's, Moon how Knight. Far, that's how far into the wine they are, yeah. Okay. 
uh, when uh, in the middle of a sentence they stop and they're like, holy shit, <laughs> isn't that one of the Fausts over there? And points over, like, obviously pointing and gawking at Garnet's table. Um, I'll, I'll play dumb. Um, oh, the who? Is that somebody important? Oh, wow, you don't know, and launches into this spiel about the first time you would ever heard of the Rothschilds kind of story. All the way back to when they got rich in the field, the fertile fields of World War One. Uh, and you're looking around now while that's happening. So, the thing that made you able to see through the illusion the first time, what was it? What did you see? Oh, experience? um... I was invited to a party by a, you know, kind of a strange group. I just thought it was a meetup, but I guess that wasn't what they were about. Uh, they had a bunch of robes and knives and stuff. Uh, and they locked me in a room, uh, and there was a thing in the room with me. And I don't really know what they expected the thing to do. This, like, terrible, monstrous creature with, like, tentacles and shit. But instead of eating me or who knows what, it just killed all of them instead. I see. How did that affect you mentally? I've been doing a lot of sex and drugs since then, um, so I haven't really been thinking about it. Uh, but I also I haven't gone back, you know, because uh, pretty sure the monster is still there. Are you high right now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Upper or downer? Oh, upper. It's co cocaine, baby. Okay. Uh, roll C through the illusion. I don't need a downer. I have my date. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hello, 911. I'd like to report a murder. It's only <laughs> mean if it isn't true. Uh, let's see. I'll burn you in it. 16. 16. Yeah. You also glance at the obviously mobsters table and see the same thing at the same moment. With the strange bits of plastic and metal and gears. And as you realize it in that same moment, you lock eyes very briefly with Garnet. You see the recognition in each other. And then Garnet's distracted by your date who is gawking and pointing and whispering loudly, which we'll get to in a second. Okay. Oh, also, uh, th I, this sounds like it'll come up pretty soon. Uh, my disadvantage, object of desire, it gets gets rolled when I meet new people. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I already want your character. You don't. Uh, no, that's unfortunate. If only that's, it's a disadvantage. So trust me, it's. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Where indeed? I, have, I already have to get you away from your awful date. They're fine. I can pay double. Oh, wow. Say so if we sh if we share him, we can both play double. Okay, we can both okay. pay double. <laughs> I already have the limo. <laughs> oh, you have a limo. That's cute, sweetie. I have a helicopter. Oh, you like a room with a view? Mm-hmm. Uh, men were bad with comparing dicks. <laughs> Not when you put the two of us together. Oh, nah. Well. <laughs> like I said, one of us is either re-rolling or everyone else is re-rolling a character. Okay. Marjorie, on the other hand. Oh.
Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to go. Well, so once there was a recognition of we both saw the same thing and then also blatantly noticing that his date is just talking blatantly about Garnet. <laughs> she'll look over at Marjorie, if you'll excuse me a moment. And then like she looks at Sid and Sin and is just like, just stay just a moment and she like pushes herself back from the table okay he's looking around for someone who might be um intimidated on the other side and or i guess he you said he was uh there as a neutral party bodyguard so he's kind of eyeing down and figuring out who he's trying to figure out who he can back down uh to be able to focus on who the problem people will be Who, who's just all bark and who is it who's got a possibility of fighting is roll see through the illusion that is soul correct that is a 12 success with complications so we'll get back to you in a second Annalise <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which table would you like to be bussing when all hell's about to break loose? Garnets, oh. Tracy's, or Ambles? I, I feel given the, the awful role I've just been inflicted with, uh, it has to be Ambles. <laughs> Damn, kids. Okay. So, you're walking over to Ambles' table. Uh, you felt sorry for, for them all night, probably. Because, you know, you've been listening in. Of course. Yes. So, maybe you're going to make a distraction. Maybe you're just going to, like, I don't know. Wink, wink, nod, nod. We're in this together, buddy. Whatever you were going to do doesn't matter, because I need you to roll see through the illusion when you walk past the gangster table. I'm really good at this, actually, weirdly enough. That is a 15 exactly. Nice. You see the same bit of plastic and metal twisting through the person's side for only a second when the jacket opens. And Tracy, success with complications. Choose your condition. Uh, fear, paralysis, or rage. Rage. Is your rage directed at the freaky thing or externally from the freaky thing? So, wait, did he see the freaky thing or? Yes. Same as everyone else did, just for a moment. All right. And is that on the side of the people that he's bodyguarding for? That's the person who hired you, yeah. Hey, at least he's, in your ch he's on your team in theory. He's going to feel the rage is coming from a place of betrayal. Okay. That this person was something else and lied about it. We'll keep it together. That is a 13. 13. Success with complications. So, uh, you get a minus one in situations where this condition would be a hindrance to you. 
you become angry. Obviously, this situation is a hindrance to you. <laughs> <clears throat> you have not yet lost any stability, though. So, is there a spot on the sheet for stability? Did I miss that? Oh, other yes. page. Never mind. Yeah, if you don't want to do the minus one in your head, you should mark it on the stability track. All right. Okay. What so specifically Tracy's... do you do yet? Do you do anything yet? Or are you going to hold your tongue for a moment? He's going to hold for a moment. But he's definitely going to... He, he He's mean eye, uh, side eye this guy, this person. And he's not doing a good job of hiding the fact that he's side eyeing the, the guy from the people on the other side of the table. The dock worker leans forward and says, for the last time, I don't have the goddamn top. We already traded it off to the lease. And your guy, very cold, calm voice, says, we know you have it. We know not only do you have it, you have it with you right now in your pocket. And that's the moment when everyone, when he flings his arm over the side and everyone looks and sees, <laughs> including someone else in the place who actually shrieks, shoves her chair back, knocks the stuff off her table, and falls over in a big heap at a different table a little bit farther away. Biker guy turns and looks towards her, and then sees all of you individually. Locking eyes. Which are reflective like steel. Like they bounce light back like polished steel. Which is different than a feral animal. <clears throat> Uh, and when that happens and it's, it gaze lingers last on Tracy who's right next to it doesn't smile doesn't have any facial recognition whatsoever but you can sense something change in it Tracy because you're closest like well I'm going to have to deal with this now and that's when the lights go out in the entire restaurant starting with Garnet who was pushing her chair back what do you do We can't hear you. Is there anything in my power set that could assist me in seeing? Uh, no, but you're really rich. So someone at the table with you probably has some form of light. Oh, well, you have a cell phone. Okay, that's... <laughs> cell phone flashlight. Yeah. Um... Then, yeah, uh, she'll just take out her cell phone and turn on the flashlight app and point it at where the guy was who just made eye contact with her. Okay. Uh, Annalise, what do you do in that first moment when the lights go out? Oh, I think she smiles and is, just turns and starts walking casually to the biker. <laughs> okay. Tracy. Yeah. The moment the lights go out, he was close enough. He couldn't have moved. He, he's just stabbing where the guy was. It's in front of him. Amble. Uh, I like, uh, I put my hands up in front of my face and I go, oh my God, I can't see. Marjorie. Uh, uh, I, I just, and if I need to, I'm going to activate my perpetual victim power. Yes, please activate that. And then we'll get to the result and roll. Uh, DM me the result and we'll narrate it. Gotcha. So I believe Marjorie was probably the only person who actually like didn't see it. Because when you described it, like Garnet was looking past her. Yes. This is the thing. So I'm so I'm the only one who's like, what the fuck is going on? Yes. Uh, yes, you are. Yeah. So Marjorie is just like, <sighs> and she like. Says, she like tells she like says like stay seated you two and she's gonna like reach for her battery for her uh, phone a flashlight okay 
Uh, Garnet turns her flashlight on. And uh, the light hits the empty chair where the biker was and the right arm and left the right arm and right leg of the biker who was already out of the chair and the light reveals that to all of you not necessarily to everyone in the restaurant that this thing when it stands up is five meters tall its head is almost brushing the ceiling of the restaurant uh as the light hits it the guy next to it stands up and jams his knife in its arm Annalise, about this time, you're almost up to it when you realize how tall it is. You're about two meters away. Uh, Marjorie, uh, you hear people starting to scream for some reason. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, okay, hold on. Do you have the page that's on, Moon, so I can readily uh, look it up? Uh, yes, the petrol victim is on... Charisma power. I really wish I could give you my sunflower pin so that way you could be a victim with my pin. 108 on the PDF, I think. No, 104. Yeah, just 104. Eh. Um. Yeah, maybe it is 108 on the PDF. But it's page 104 in the document. Okay. Uh, How many of those options do you want to activate in this scene? Or immediately uh, in this scene. Did you get all three? It says... Uh... Second one seems helpful right now. Well, will that actually work on the thing? You don't know, but you could try. Well, it's not trying to harm me right now. No. Uh, so probably the first one? Yeah, I think... So you can pick any of them that you want, but it's Marjorie who's still locking eyes with you. Okay, so I will make Marjorie want to take care of me. And I'll save the other two for later in the scene. Wow. It's a compulsion, Marjorie. Okay. Like IRL. <laughs> so, Marjorie, what do you do? Okay. So I see this, this feeble... Six foot two person. Six foot two person. Well, Marjorie's pretty tall herself. She's like five nine, six foot. So. How old is Marjorie? Uh, she's like maybe like fifty five. How old is Amble? Oh my god. Uh, oh no. <laughs> oh yes. I need to Here know if this go. is a milf situation or a mother situation. He is twenty four. It's, it's a up mom. to you, Marjorie. <laughs> you know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, it'll start mom, and it might turn milk. We'll I, I rolled percentile for that, too, by the way. Yeah. Um, all, like, all of, like, like, all Marjorie sees in this moment is this poor, doped-up young man in a scary situation, and she needs to help him. Yeah. Uh, like a cheap, ill-fitting suit that, like, obviously someone oh, else, you like, poor, for him. You poor so baby. So it's almost like, like a cheap. Almost like, almost like a kid in a suit that's too big for him. All right. So Marjorie is going to like snap to Ace and Siegfried and say, "Get out!" and order them to like make a run for it. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, Marjorie is like in the kind of like chaos. She's going to move like as tables are getting flipped over as people are trying to like run and freak out she's going to run over and grab him by the wrist and say we're getting you out uh garnet what do you tell sid and sin to do he can destroy okay in those exact words cute uh what do you do because you were in the middle of doing something when all this started happening now for garnet annalise and tracy you could still help amble you're just not obsessively forced to in a negative way. Um, Garnet sees that Marjorie's handling it, so that's fine. Um, there's also 
more pressing matters, gestures to the five meter tall thing that just, you know, happened. Um, 15 foot tall steampunk cyborgs are a problem. Yeah, so... Do I still have the same spells? Uh, so the way we did it before was more specific than the way it normally works. So basically with uh, do a ritual, if it's death related and we can come up with fun, cool flavor, you can do it. Okay. Uh, most rituals aren't done on the fly, but you could have rituals prepared so that you can do things when necessary, which is how most mages work. Okay. Um, seeing that it's a cyborg s creature, do I think that Pentance would work on it? Uh, roll, uh, read a person. Okay. I know it's not a person, but it still applies. Yeah. Sixteen. Okay, that means you get either three or two of the questions. Ask the ones you want to know. Oh, I don't have the cheat sheet up. Damn. Oh, yeah. I know I was forgetting something. <laughs> this is a new computer, which means I don't have any of those things. I can get it. Let's see. Too far. <laughs> I have gone too deep. Okay, read a person. Yeah. And has book. Also, for those who don't see how beautiful this thing is. It really is. Art, they are, it, the, the entire book is full of magnificent art. It is. It's yeah, like, it's like, it's like, uh, it's Paradise Lost meets Hellraiser, and it's beautiful. That's, uh, that's by Bastion, actually. We met him. Uh, uh, what page am I going to? It's 120-something. I hadn't quite gotten there. Oh. Uh, it's in the character creation section. He also did the art for that game, uh, Dots, that we... Oh, did he? Cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was yeah. While we wait for her to look it up, I will also mention, since we haven't said it yet, that Helmcast sponsors our Cult Divinity Lost shows, and soon we will be showing off Beyond Darkness and Madness. It's on its way to me now, it's just slow, because all books are slow these days. Yeah. So we're going to show off those and use some of their cool, sexy new maps that came with Labyrinths and Secrets, too. Yeah. This is the, the questions on the read a person roll? Mm hmm What page? Uh, I, I have the, the cheat sheet the cheat up sheet? Okay. from oh. the, the website. Can you Questions drop that in the are, Discord? Um, or just like maybe? the link to it? Yeah, the link's fine sure. too. And then, yeah, you can tell us the questions while she looks it up. You can keep that over there. I got what I needed. The monster. But just just to let you know, that this this is Garnet's end goal. Just, just, just to let you know. Oh. No reason whatsoever. Dress for the job you want, honey. <laughs> yep. All right. Now that I've shared the link in Discord, uh, thank you. Questions are: Are you lying? How do you feel right now? What are you about to do? What do you wish I would do? How could I get you to dot dot dot? Definitely the last one. Yeah. How many do you get on a complete success? Two. Two. So, how do you get it to? Leave, stop, submit. Hmm. Yeah, um, I'm going to be asking, what are you about to do? And how do I get you to... What's a good word? Yeah, I guess leave. How do I get you to leave? It wants a top, like a spinning top, that it is 100% sure those dock worker mob guys have. 
Okay. What is it about to do? It's about to remove everything it perceives as a threat in this building, which is everyone who saw through the illusion. But you recognize as yourself, Annalise, Tracy, Amble, Marjorie, and that random poor dude in the corner. Lady, it's not a dude. Um. Cool. And it will start, because you rolled high, I will also tell you it will start with the most dangerous threat. That's you. <laughs> okay, this still didn't answer my question of whether Pentance or not would work on it, so... It did not, but you don't think it will with looking at it and figuring out that it's it's very machine-like. There's no emotion here at all. Okay. Um... Garnet is not a fight character, so... Does Garnet have Death Hexes on hand ready to go? Um, are you asking just in general? Because I don't have any of that on my sheet. So, magic works one of two ways. Either you give us a good explanation of why you already had something cast and ready to go, or you begin a ritual and see how long it takes to make it manifest. And if it involves entropy, death, or bad luck, you can do it as a death mage. Okay, well... TLDR... When we were doing this originally, you didn't have any spells, and you gave me two spells that would not work on this creature because they're both emotion-based. Correct. So, no, I don't have anything prepared that would be of use. Well, no, I mean, well, you don't on your sheet right now, but is there anything cool you can think of that would help in this situation? You, you said you have emotion-based spells on your sheet? Uh... Yeah, which is one is to make you live all of your sins at once, and then the other one is to make you emotionless and make you unempathetic. The creature is sitting at a table, or was at a table, across from violent mob workers. Dock workers. Are you living out all those sins at once means that you have angry, violent creep things that could be between you and the creature. That's one option. So maybe Other options don't... would be... Uh... Oh, sorry, go ahead. So, so maybe you don't have to cast it on the creature. You don't have to kill it. You just need to get something between you and it right now. That is one option. Another option would be... Uh bad luck charm that when you use it, it causes it to burst out into the general area. Yes, magic catches the innocent all the time in cult. Uh, a third option would be uh, entropy. Make something break down that is very disadvantageous to the creature. So, the table that's next to it, uh, it's shoes, it's wearing a human guise, all of those things are normal. Quote unquote normal. And all of those would just be soul rolls. Um, I know he's targeting me first, but I, I don't have anything. So just move on. Okay. What does Annalise do? Oh, uh, I'd like to use one of my advantages here. I'd, I'd like to uh, use Contagious Insanity on this tall drink of madness. <laughs> Okay. All drink of madness. I love it. Roll it. This is a soul roll. 12 plus 3. A uh, 15. Okay. Tell us what that does. Just one moment while I crack the book. <laughs> uh, 112. Thank you. Ah, yes. Page Sandy. 15. Choose two options. My options are afflict your victim with temporary psychosis in which they are haunted by their fears, trigger disadvantage with another person, that's PCs only, so it doesn't apply here, affect an additional victim, or call for creatures of madness to haunt the infected. So I think I'm going to choose option one. I'm going to afflict this thing with temporary psychosis where they're haunted by their own fears, and then I'm going to call for creatures of madness to haunt the infected. Okay. 
describe what that second part is like. Um, I think it looks like uh, hands reach for and rip open the lie, and these indescribable eldritch beings tumble forth and start climbing all over and wrapping themselves around this giant being and whispering things in a tongue it doesn't understand. Okay. Hold on one second. I think those... Yeah, okay. What do you say out loud? Be very specific. Me? Yes, mm. or anything, if anything. Oh, uh... Look at how quaint you are with your 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 defined form and your defined reality. Let me give you a peek into what lurks inside me. Let me give you a peek into what lurks inside me. Okay. It turns its attention away from Garnet. <laughs> you don't see fear on it, but you are making it experience its worst fear, which you don't know what that is. But that is kind of hilarious because you just did it inadvertently. It immediately stops, turns, and moves towards you. And all of the rest of you can see this bit too because Garnet is still holding the flashlight. The, its arms elongate and then split. the hands split open and become multiple tools, which look very specifically like the kind of tools you would use to get inside someone and see what's in there. As if it's oh. obeying orders, literally. Tracy, roll violence. You stabbed it. This should be considered a street fight situation? I, yeah, we'll call it that. Okay. So, that is a 16. And that would be, as a street fighter, uh, gives three edges, dodge, avoid attack, flurry of blows, take plus two on your roll to attack an opponent, uh, dirty strike, momentarily stun the opponent by painfully striking them. Imagine this creature, it has turned away if, he, if it is going after Annalise. Uh, What'd you get on the roll? Got a 16. So, the knife goes into its arm and a fluid much like oil comes out. You manage to use your leverage and muscle to physically turn it temporarily. You slowed it down. But you didn't actually, you don't actually think you hurt it. You just kind of stuck a thing in it that you could then use to turn it away momentarily before it pushes against you so hard the knife blade breaks off the handle and it's left in its arm and it doesn't seem to give a shit. Amble and Marjorie, what are you two doing? Um, Marjorie, like, looks back, sees the thing, looks back to Amble. How is Amble, like, reacting, I guess? Like, his, is he acting like he can see it? Yes. Yeah, I, 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 once you grab my hand, I like stand up and I'm like, do you see that thing? She got, so Marjorie kind of does like a. It's like a transformer or something. What's going on? Oh, good. You're in on this too. She gives him a pat on the cheek and um, I'm going to start hauling him um, out the back door. Okay. Uh, when, um, I yell at the creature. I want to activate um, divine. Okay. That's on page uh, 114. It's a soul roll. Then roll it and read us your results. Okay. All right. Uh, so that is 17. Wow. It's a lot different than 2d10. Um, 
So the creature mistakes you for a god. Choose up the three <laughs> options. Usable any time during this scene. Well then. Uh, my options are soothe an aggressive creature and command the creature and force it to obey your order. Now, give me your exact command. Uh. Hmm. Do you think it's here to kill all those guys? And I point to all the dock workers. Uh. I need Annalise and Amble to both roll charisma. Highest wins. That's one of my shit stats. <laughs> That's good for you. Then it won't try to go and see your insights. Uh, I got a 13. Lucky 13. Oh, you want me to roll charisma? Yeah, the higher is going to be the one that it commands. That commands it. Uh, is that a 6? Okay, so... I got a 9. Okay. It chooses to obey Annalise's orders. It actually says, in a very mechanical grating voice, orders received, conflict, conflict resolve, obeying orders. Secondary task, resolve top. And then as it does so, it like explodes out of the clothes it was wearing. And it's not just really tall now, now it's also really wide. And it is half metal, half flesh with plastic bits going through all of it. It's very inhuman. The flesh parts are just like in random spots, except it does have a face. Uh, when it does so, it inadvertently spears through two of the dock workers with its leg as it moves towards Annalise rapidly. So Marjorie, are you still dragging uh, Amble out while all of this is happening? Yeah, um, Marjorie doesn't have a lot of combat. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Mar um, Marjorie is just trying to, you know, think, trying to think, trying to think of the poor, feeble young man that needs her help. Um, yeah, maybe we should hide. Maybe we should hide someplace, like under a table or something. Yes, girl. Okay. Uh, so I was reading up on the things that you provided me, uh, since they were new. Um, so field of expertise I actually took summoning um, and she knows a couple of things so I'm going to take a minus two to my ritual because I can only fulfill two of the four Okay. obviously time I cannot um, provide as well as particular location but I have assistance and I have my objects of power yes also what does the talisman do specifically as an advantage um, the talisman as an advantage is, um, you discovered a talisman with a spirit bound to it, for example, a mummified hand, a doll, or a yellowed photograph. The talisman can guide you in the realms of death. When you allow the talisman to guide you, roll plus soul. Um, and the options are, find a particular place in the realm of death, find a portal back to the lands of the living, or steal your senses against the influences of the realm of death or the magic of its inhabitants. Okay. So that won't help with any of those minuses. No. Okay. So. I still just roll the normal 2d10. Yep. And then your soul is, what, 5? So it's actually just plus 3 because of the minus. Math is hard. Wow. Why did that plus three, like, wreck my day? 16. <laughs> this is 130. That's why. <laughs> uh, 16. Complete success. So, um, <clears throat> out of my options, um, I am not considered a journeyman or an adept, right? Not yet. Correct. Okay. So, I only technically have three options. Um, I choose that the ritual effects last 
for as long as I actively uphold them and the ritual affects other dimensions, just so in my mind that just makes me the summoning easier because it's affecting more than just here. Um, and I am summoning... You can either come up something or I can just make it up. Oh, I I mean, I was just going to summon one of the Purgatides. Okay. <laughs> specific one? <laughs> yeah, a specific one that she owns the fork to. Okay. Because it's easy, because she has the fork. Okay. When that happens, charnel smell fills the whole restaurant. And uh, everything gets colder. And you don't see it because the only light is Garnet's cell phone, which is bobbing now because she's been doing her ritual. So the light is also crazy, which is making the monster more terrifying. Bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but in the back of the restaurant, you hear a strange noise, like air being displaced rapidly. And uh, uh, that's all that happens for that for right this second. Marjorie and Amble. Are you going um... to hide under a table? That was, that was my plan. Yeah. Uh, can I look to see if maybe this dock worker that um, he was accusing of having the um, top? Like, where is this dude at? Uh, pushing the two dead guys off of him. Okay. Um, I'm going to go, you know, see if he's got a fucking top on him. Are you now? How are you gonna? How are you gonna search this guy? This very violent person. Um. Let's see. Could I like? Can I use my notorious advantage to, uh, you know, get him to turn out his pockets for me? Uh, let's roll it and find out. All right. Mm. So just to be clear, you're walking past the creature. Carefully? To... Yes. Carefully walking past the creature? Um... Okay, um, I have to, I have to roll. So the creature actually has moved oh. away from that table now because it's going for Annalise. You're okay. Okay. 104 is the page you're 104. Okay. 104. Uh, hold on. Fuck. Uh, 104, 104. I got this, guys. Um, okay. So... Whenever I encounter someone who has likely heard about me, I can roll charisma. Um, and then I have plus two, if I, well, we'll see how I roll, but um, I have to roll charisma. So, uh, 19. Wow. Success, what's that mean? Um, they know your reputation. You can decide what they have heard. The GM will have them act accordingly. I take a plus two on my next roll to influence them. What do you want them to have known that you think would intimidate a gangster? Um, that I've probably sold uh, his, pe my company has probably like provided his people the drugs that have either killed them or have like made him uh, succeed. Okay. Uh, during all of that, Tracy, what are you doing now that it broke your knife? Which you can freely replace in the next scene. It's got fleshy bits, right? It does. Gonna attack the fleshy bits. Roll violence. And using the flurry of blows for the punch plus two from the bullet carried over. Wow, I needed that. Ten. 
Okay, success with complications. What's that mean? Uh, success with complications while fighting. Um, you inflict damage, but at a cost. The DM, the GM chooses. You are subjected to a counterattack. You do less damage than intended. You lose something important. You expend all your ammo. You are beset by a new threat. You're in trouble later on. Roll a void arm. What is my reflexes? Oh, damn, I should put something into that. I do not avoid harm. Oh, wait, no, it's a seven. Don't forget that you have to subtract the damage, which means you're at additional minus three. Damage from what I only got the, the don't forget part. Oh, sorry. Uh, because you failed to dodge the attack, it hit you, and its, da its damage is three. So your avoid harm roll is modified by minus three. And then whatever your other modifiers are. Uh, my, It's still less than... It's still... A, it's a seven before the negatives. No, that was so, your avoid harm. Now you're rolling into yeah. injury. Oh, okay. So I'm... So fortitude minus three plus whatever your fortitude modifier is. Eleven. Success with complications. So... Uh... You drive your knife into one of its fleshy bits, and you don't even know if it noticed or not, but one of its flailing arms, legs, things, there's six of them now, hits you across the side. Uh, it flings you across the room, and you're like, hey, it didn't cut into me. I did a good job. You're thinking that right up until you hit the window, and it shatters, embedding you with glass. Then you hit the ground behind it. We'll come back to you in a minute. Annalise! That's me. Still coming at you. Well, that, that's cute. I'm not scared of this thing. <laughs> um, I, I think there, there is the, the click clack clack of uh, someone flipping the butter, butter, butterfly knife that's proficient in using it. I'd okay. like to, uh, I'd like to shank it in its fleshy bits now. Okay. Roll violence. Uh oh. Oh, that's. How did I roll two ones on D10? Four. I have a four. I have okay. a four. Uh, yeah. Uh, you flail at it, and it just kind of like <laughs> swats you oh, with the leg. Wait, wait, wait. I just. I, I, got, I got plus one D10. So, hold on. Okay, roll it. <laughs> Uh, that it makes it a 12 now. Success Thank you, Drea. Okay. <laughs> Woo. You hit it. You drive your knife into it. And it picks you up. And I need you to avoid harm. Avoid injury. Great injury. Can I, um, can I use one of my other divine options to help the... Yes. Okay, so I kind of got the sense that it, like, listened to what I was saying for a moment. Like, it was like, does not compute or something. Uh, and it's robot voice when I, when I spoke up. Um, so when I see it, like, grab Annalise, I kind of stand up from behind the chair, from behind the table. And I say, no, no, Bumblebee, don't. I don't know, transform or something. <laughs> Transform or something. Uh, it just stops. Instructions unclear. Clarify. And at that moment, the purgatide slips up behind Garnet Sid and Sin. Says, well, is this a pickle? Good thing you can stick a fork in it. Clever. You always were a clever girl. You know you always were right? 
I think we're pretty even, considering. This thing is not like anything where I come from. But I can tell you. It thinks humans are still its masters, even though you have not been for a long time. Give it orders, like that fool over there. And it will obey them to the best of its ability. However, it will not leave until you get what it wants. Maybe you should find out why. And then it gestures with its hand, and uh, chains come out of nowhere like it's a Hellraiser movie and wrap up four of its six limbs, knocking it to the ground. It starts cutting through the chains very easily, but it's slowing it down. Better hurry. I can only hold this off so long. Then Garnet would like to move and jump on top of the thing's chest so she's face to face with it when she gives it orders. Okay. Uh, roll, uh, act under pressure. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. The DM will remember this. <laughs> Ten. Success with complications. Uh,. You succeed. I'll take a hold for later. <laughs> Don't jump on it, Faust! What, are you crazy? <laughs> uh, I don't know her name. I just know she's a Faust. That's what I'm <laughs> Don't even know your name. You land on its chest. It can see you. Please clarify instructions. What is transform? Like into a bug. You know, a bug or something. Like a Volkswagen. Ignore all orders except for mine. You will cease your violent rampaging, and we will find your objective peacefully. Orders acknowledged. Processing. Uploading data to activator. Quarry is escaping. That's when you notice that dude's going out the window. Any chances the window that I just got thrown out of? <laughs> <laughs> uh... We'll say yes. Well played. Um, as I see the guy who supposedly has the top that this thing is after, I I'm going to uh, pistol with him. Roll violence. Garnet, do you give it any f further instructions while that's happening? Or just hold it here for now? Uh, I can't think of any other instructions. I just want it to not, you know, destroy everything. And I don't know Annalise from Adam, but I also don't want her to get squished, so... A potential good cult member there. I know. She looks so very spicy. I like her. So, question. So, for my Street Fighter, I got three edges. Okay. Right, and I used one already. Yes. It can be used at any time during the scene. Flurry of Blows says take two on your roll to attack an opponent. So that does not necessarily mean just the one that I was attacking originally. No, it could be any okay. opponent. Okay. Seems like I just wasted it because I rolled a 15 without. All right. <laughs> Plus is already. So, um, does it matter how high above 15 that I got? No. Only that okay. it's above. Sometimes I'll give you a bonus, but mechanically, no. And then I had... So what was I at for negatives? Or was that just for that one roll? That was just for that one roll. Okay. So then, yeah, that's like a 20 then? Okay. 19? Yeah, yeah you pistol whip that guy into unconsciousness. Just wham, done. Target no longer, or objective no longer fleeing. Query. We must find the top. Please retrieve. Uh, we will yeah, not find a top in this town. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Wow. I'm almost offended. Oh, are we past the fun part now? For now. 
um, looks over at uh, Tracy. Would you mind rifling his pockets? Tracy is already going through his pockets. Okay. Um, Fair. He's not looking for a top. He's, <laughs> he, 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 he's just robbing the guy. Uh, uh, while you're doing that, Marjorie will like, she's like straightening her like jacket and her tie. And she like smooths her hair back. And uh, she's going to go picking through his pockets. The top. Both of you roll investigate. Nope. Um, fourteen. Actually, hold on. Um, yeah, fourteen. Instead of rolling investigate, can I um assist? With yes. Marjorie's roll? You would still roll investigate, but yes. Oh. Well, I, I, I attempted to help. I, I, did not, I was not helpful. Okay. <laughs> I, I made it easier by dumping all the things that he didn't think was any of any value on the ground. So unless the top was is gold or in a wallet with full of money that he's just pocketing, what was the result He's, of your roll, Tracy? My roll before my negative one is a six. Cool. I will take a hold for future use. Epic. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so I got a, I got 14 on mine. Okay. Uh, success. With complications. Okay. I'll take a hold for you too. This whole gang's gonna come for you guys later. Yeah. Yeah, just as soon as someone summons a tentacle. What is his what's this gang that was with him? So doing? we haven't got to that yet. <laughs> Inside <laughs> right now. After he's been after he ran out of window and got pistol whipped and he's now being robbed. So. Marjorie, you find a small, very ornate, very old box made out of wood. You run your fingers across it. I need you to roll soul. Fifteen on the nose. Nice. There's a pattern to this. You've seen Hellraiser, you know how this works. Oh, oh no. Okay. You are uh, almost compelled to follow the pattern, but you can see it. This is it. This is the box. Okay. Um, Marjorie will, like, pat TJ on the shoulder. No. Good work. Good work, darling. Keep it up. And uh, yeah, sure, she'll, whatever. She'll walk back over to uh, Garnet and uh, and Bumblebee, and she'll hold the box up so that uh, it's in the like robots like field of view. She'll Object. say, "Identify objective." Object acquired. You will accompany me to return this to Persephone. What? Yeah, Marjorie just kind of like looks around at like the chaos, and she you look just around, like... and you've all been focused in on what's happening. But what you see is about half the restaurant was inadvertently killed by this giant thing flashing its sharp legs everywhere, and the other half has now been murdered by spoons, forks, and knives, except for the few who managed to actually escape. It's it's, it's a bloodbath. Ernest looks over. I leave you alone for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is an eternity to know all of this flesh. She rolls her eyes. Um, gesturing to the top. Um, clarify objective. 
Reclaim top. Return to Persephone in Metropolis. Clarify Persephone. Persephone. Legendary. Uh, mythological Greek goddess. And it spits out the whole story. Reality. And it starts talking. And then it like falters and says uh, data missing incomplete analysis um, what does the top do data incomplete analysis required oh, can we my. give it the top object appears to be classification underworld Oh bother! Um, oh I, bother! Are you Winnie the Pooh now? Uh, I uh, I think I uh, I do some cocaine. <laughs> On that note, I'm gonna need those of you who are still more or less human, Amble, Marjorie, and not super violent or a death mage, to roll. Keep it together. At minus two. Oh. Oh, I, I didn't hear my name, so I assume I'm you're not fine. Included. The two of you Something. inured to violence in the death mage are like, yeah, that's just a bunch of dead bodies. I'm fine. <laughs> speaking uh, of the speaking of the dead bodies, Tracy is going exactly to be willpower. Oh, it's a willpower yeah. save. It's a willpower yeah. save. Yes. Tracy's going to be starting with the dock workers and well, working his way through the bikers. Fifteen. Just looting them. Running their pockets, hoping to replace the knife. Maybe pick up a nice gun or two. Okay, so that's a 12 I heard for Amble. What'd Marjorie get? 15. Success with complications for Amble. Marjorie, you keep it together. You can role play accordingly, but you're not forced to take a condition. Amble, you can pick your condition. Uh, disgusted, sickened, or terrified. Um, what's the difference between disgusted and sickened? Sickened means you're actually going to throw up. Disgusting just means you're grossed out. You don't want to touch it, and you can't. You didn't, you know, I'm not going to step in the blood to get out of here. Carry me. Um. Uh, disgusted at the creature or the situation? At all of the dead people. <laughs> There's like oh, yeah. 50 dead people in this that's restaurant good. now. Sure, disgusted works. That, that's good. Okay. But you still keep it together. Neither of you take any stability damage. But the smell is nauseous. Innards are wow. out. Blood is everywhere. Helps. What was that? If there's a cocaine. bad smell, it does bad. help, yes. Um, Marjorie takes a hit from her inhaler and she like tucks it back in her breast pocket and then she like reaches into her other pocket and she pulls out like um like a pill bottle and she like dabs out two and she offers one to Amble. Yeah, I take it. For your nerves. Sure, okay. <laughs> My nerves. Yeah. It's one of, you know, it's one of, it's one of like the medications that uh, Air Enterprise is so well known for. Okay. Uh, Sid and Sin, Garnet's assistants that are apparently capable. Garnet, your lawyer's dead. Marjorie, the irrelevant NPC to your your story is dead. <laughs> the two that are relevant are alive and screaming at the moment. Okay, uh, I'll walk over and I'll like, like I'll kind of like slap both of them on the cheeks and say, "You get it together. Get a therapist. We'll pay for it. Confidential. We don't talk about this tonight." Uh. Garnet has zero care that her lawyer's dead. She actually just goes over to what paperwork would have been left with him that's relevant to her company and just hands it over to Sen. Sen takes it. It's miraculously untouched by any blood or viscera. Sen tucks it away. Sin and Sid are like, we need to go. Now you hear that? And that's when you all hear sirens. The Tekron says accompany us to return object to Persephone. Added benefit, escape law enforcement. Um, um, can I use my last order on the Tekron? 
from my divine power? Uh, you could try, but Garnet has specifically told it ignore all other incoming orders. <laughs> what is oh. your last divine thing? Yeah, but it's, I mean, I don't know if, if, if it's competing divine. I said, okay, get us out of here. <laughs> Depends, would Garnet stop that? Um... Because the Garnet was just going to tell it to return to its humanoid form and not its gigantic form. So, um... It could do both. If you want yes. a hint, roll see through the illusion, Garnet. Fine. When does that surface? Six. Ten. Sixteen. Twenty-one. It's not going to take you across town. It's going to take you to Metropolis. Right now? Yeah. She <laughs> looks over at Marjorie and Amble. Because at this moment, <laughs> she she's just like, I'm not sure you want it to do that. Amber. I have uh, an option for perpetual victim where I can make people confide in me. I look at Garnet and I say, tell us what's really going on here, Fausty. Fausty, wow. Do I have any role against that or it's just powers? Uh, that one, you who's not part of, you have to roll that separate, right? Uh, no, when I did Perpetual Victim, I got uh, I got three options, two of which I got the whole, and one of my options is make someone confide in you. So, you have to tell him something, but you don't have to be completely blatantly obvious, uh, honest, like if you were on Sodium Pentothal. Truth serum. You can, Share something. You can, you can admit parts you don't want him to know. Um... Getting away does not entail us walking out of this door. It is us going someplace else entirely, like not on this plane of existence. Are there cops there? Yes. Yes. Okay, but are they like LA cops? Like, you know. No, you know, they're, like they're the, worse. They can't be. Bullshit! <laughs> Am I still technically on the job? No, your employer is dead. I'll hire you, don't worry. Or unconscious, whatever. Emily's going to strike a match on the metal parts of this thing. The Faust just offered to hire just you, Tracy. Light a ciggy. Just... Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, let me just make sure I've got adequate supplies here. Checking to see if the... Yeah, you have like all can... the guns now. Oh, can I take one? Yes. Oh, there are guns it? everywhere on these mobs. Yeah, sure. Here um, you go. I'm yeah, gonna just, you know, I'll like, like with like with like weird like accuracy that you wouldn't expect like an old lady. She would like pick up a gun, like check the chamber, and like put it like and like tuck it. Like, I'm assuming um, these are all handguns since it's uh, at a formerly three Michelin star restaurant. Yes. Um. They're losing at least one star for this. Formally. Oh, look at me. Ma has some skills, apparently. That's cute. <laughs> um, Garnet points at Annalise. Um, you seem oddly well adjusted. Sure. You're more than welcome to join us, or me specifically. She needs all the help she can get, especially if we're going to Metropolis. How kind of you, Miss Erie. Um, Amble, as you seem to not care one way or another, as long as you have cocaine, sure. Oh, you got cocaine? I it's LA, cocaine. everyone has cocaine. Um, she who oh. looks at the um, mechanical creature thing, cyborg. Oh, it has cocaine. Um, take us to Metropolis. Like literally quickly. what I just said. Yeah. 
before before it like takes us as like her people are running out the door marjorie will turn back to her lawyer and say i'm going to be i'm going to be on vacation for a few days darling hold down the fort for me but if the cops there are worse than the lapd shouldn't we bring the fucking lawyer and during all of those sentences is when the creature says complying and everything goes black until next week But apparently, you're going to go straight to Metropolis. Brilliant. I love it. What can go wrong? I'm sure it's fine. It's all fine. I'm going straight to hell and you're coming with me. Right. Uh, the, Metropolis is in hell. I'm just going to put that out there right now. Metropolis is in hell. But also nope. not necessarily better. No. <laughs> it's a different kind of bad. Yeah. When it said complying, do you think that meant it was going to get us cocaine? No. Divine, yeah. divine metropolis you, cocaine. You have two like billionaires in your arsenal. I'm sure you can get cocaine from one of us. From where? You let your lawyer go. So I'm I just, I just robbed I mean, a bunch of criminals. Garnet's got I'm the sure case. some of them had coke on them. Yeah, say Garnet's got the cocaine. Right. I've got. I, the- I have been to this party. I've got the. I know I'm in. gonna get there, and I'm gonna be the only one who brought any cocaine. I've oh all before. I I have at least Kalanapin okay, on okay. me. Okay, you rich bitches, and oh, I've got all the cocaine you need. You don't know how much cocaine I need. <laughs> uh, uh, I think Drea nailed it. It's a snow angel. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. The Listen to my visions time, yeah. of reality fade, and the comforting safe lie descends upon us once again. We hope you return next week to see where this craziness goes. It's going to be awesome. Until then, though, there are many other fine performances the Razides of Orbital Tales can provide you with. On Mondays, come see Curse of Strahd revamped at 7 p.m. They got to kill a zombie lord. It's fine. Solemn Veil, vale, Seasons of Strange, April wraps at 11 p.m. They have to deal with some apple cultists. It's also fine. Dark Sun at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. They have mortally wounded Kallik, but now they must chase him down and finish the job. On Wednesday, we have Defenders of Tomorrow and Mutants and Masterminds 3E at 8. On Thursday, we have Starfinder at 9. On Fridays, Masks of Gnarly Thotep at 7. And, of course, uh, the finale of our other Cult Divinity Lost Tale at 11, which will then be replaced with They Came From Camp Murder Lake. And on Saturday at 7, Reign of Winter, followed by this story at 11. And finally, tomorrow at 9, Mage of the Ascension. And that is where you will find me next, is running Mage of the Ascension, where they've already broken time, so there's not any more possible horrible damage they can do. Right? Right. Players, tell everyone where you can be found next on our channel and other cool things you do on the internet. Oh, I am Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. You will find me next come tomorrow, Easter evening, playing Mage, where I play Roxy, who is no longer just a werecat. She is the Avignon for the traditionalist, which means she's a best at changeling mage mummy. I think I'm missing something. But you get the gist. I'm a lot of stuff. I have a 10 page character sheet and it's all fine uh hello i am aaron once again um uh you can find me pretty much everywhere as great to live uh next you can find me uh tomorrow uh noonish i will be on my own channel i i do i'm going to start doing uh sentimental sundays where i play games that will most likely make me cry on stream congrats uh, after that, uh, this will, you'll be able to find me there. Wednesday, we'll be recording Changing the Lost with Ambrose running for the Corporate Tales Patreon. Very excited for that. Um, and then, uh, oh, I should I skipped over fucking Monday. I'm looking forward to Monday. Summervale here as well. I'm so excited to be back because I missed the last time you played. Uh, yeah, so Summervale recording Changeling and then back here for Cult. Hi, uh, I'm Salubri. Uh, you may find me at Salubri underscore North America on the platform of your choosing. Uh, tonight, I played the beginning of the end of Miss Marjorie Air. Uh, you could find me on Twitch sometimes, streaming video games that give me anguish. 
Uh, I'll be back here this next Saturday to play more cult for you guys. And in the not too distant future, you can find me on Verbal Tales Patreon, uh, running a Dungeons and Dragons homebrew game set in the not so toxic world of League of Legends. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, Kowloon Khalil. Uh, you can call me Loon. Uh, I'm on Twitter at, at @kkhalil. Um, I write and play role-playing games. You can find my stuff on the Storyteller's Vault, uh, including Sabat stuff for V5. And I play here on Vorpal Tales. Um, actually, I think this is the only game other than the Patreon game. Yeah, so uh, hopefully find me in Mage soon and um, definitely not a character that I've been waiting 10 years to play. And uh, here uh, on Saturday's Playing Cult. Hello, I am Zachary Naldrick, he, him. I can be found on the Bird app and other various places on the interwebs at Zach Rules. Uh, I also have the website, ZachRules.com. For the social media places that you can't find me at Zach Rules because somebody named Zach Ruiz spelled his name wrong, uh, you can find me at Zach Rules Dice. Uh, the next time I will be gracing the Twitches is going to be Wednesday at like seven eastern at bard's playhouse playing a vampire called hammer that's what he does that's what his name is excellent and, and then here oh yes and then here and on that note we leave you to your nightmares because in dreaming you can perceive the truth we'll see you next week good night sweet dreams <laughs> <laughs>